I'm still not entirely sure what we witnessed yesterday. I, I think there was an element of, of it being a fluke. I think there was some tactical plan there. I think there was a lot of spirit. I think we relied on a goalkeeper. As I said on yesterday's video, at 1-1, one, one, I, I had a very, very different title for yesterday's video. And it was lucky, lucky West Ham. And it was, you know, West Ham get away with it. Because I thought at 1-1 one, one we were lucky. I thought Everton were a better team. We'd relied on so many brilliant saves from Alphonse Areola. I really did. Um, but obviously, the title of it changed. And, and so it should. You know, if, if you're going to have a, a player like Thomas Suchek, and we will talk about him a little bit later, score a goal like that, which was a wonderful goal, clearly it's, it's going to change your take on the game. And I was really pleased that, I was, that they turned it round, and, and I really enjoyed it. It made for a really good evening. And uh, as I said, I had to get the video wrapped up quite early yesterday, which is why I want to particularly focus on Areola, and, and in, in particular, uh, Edson Alvarez in this video. I had to go off. It was my daughter's birthday. We had a, went to, for an all-you-can-eat buffet. I had five, I'm not joking, five creme brulees. Um, I was not well. But when I was driving up there, actually, um, Talk Sport was on the radio. Jamie O'Hara was on. It was very much goading West Ham fans. It was very much a case of where are you now? Where you know, and it's, uh, you know, it, I, I, I don't like it. I mean, I think if you were to ask Jamie O'Hara privately, do you think football is a game of opinions? Do you think people can have different opinions? Do, do you respect someone else's opinion? I think he'd say yes to all of them. But it was a case of basically West Ham fans phoning now. You're wrong. You're deluded. You get called deluded so often. Like you don't have a right to be. Um, concerned about the football we're playing, or, or to be unsure about the manager, or, or anything else. There's a lot of people calling a lot of a lot of people names at the moment, and I think it's it's such a shame. And I just wanted to. Well, I did. I did enjoy the win, and I, I, but I think it's such a shame when you can't enjoy the win because maybe your, you know, your mindset is is set towards that to, to be an argumentative rather than actually enjoying. But anyway, it's not Jamie Harris Tottenham. Why would he enjoy it anyway? Um, Ariola, what? What a magnificent performance it was. And I think we really do have an incredible goalkeeper on our hands. If you were watching the build-up show, we uh, somebody asked who was your man of the, man of the, uh, was your hammer of the year so far. And I said in it would be probably Edson Alvarez, but statistically going by, because we do our, our patron player ratings here, and we would be doing that video tomorrow. Um, statistically, Ariola is our player of the season so far. And that is done by statistics. He literally has more man of the matches than anybody else. So um, he's our best player, which indicates, number one, that we've got a very, very good goalkeeper. And number two, that we defend all the time and we are reliant on a very good goalkeeper. And I'm not sure how much of a tactic it is when you are constantly relying on your goalkeeper to get you wins. But the way we played yesterday, when it works, we can end up winning. When it doesn't work and the goalkeeper doesn't get man of the match, which invariably he can't do all the time, that's when you get beaten by fours, fives and sixes, which is what can happen to West Ham. Um, which is probably probably something... I, I, I didn't stay. It was only a 10-minute journey and I didn't listen to the radio. Maybe somebody went on uh, TalkSport and made that point to Jamie O'Hara. Anyway, um, what was... So I'm not entirely sure what, what I saw yesterday. <laughs> but... In, it finished up being entertaining, but for the first hour, you know, whatever, I don't know, uh, for the first 60, 65 minutes of that game, maybe something like that, it was not an entertaining game. Not only had I written Lucky Lucky West Ham on on my notes, I'd actually, I'd actually written on them, anybody that's paid to go and watch this game deserves a medal, because I thought it was a clash of styles which was a sort of match made in hell. Uh, two of the worst styles in the Premier League, David Moyes and Sean Dyche. And it was awful. I, honestly, I, I thought the game was awful. I, I thought it lacked skill. I, I felt really sorry, actually, for Kudus and for Jared Bowen at the start of the game. I just thought they weren't getting any sort of service at all. Uh, Pat Guitar was, as I mentioned in yesterday's video, wasn't particularly good. I think that impacts how the ball's being got forward. And, and you, you got this guy... Edson Alvarez, who tried to do everything. And just sometimes you get you get these sort of performances. So Alvarez, I thought, played the best pass of the match, where he played the ball over the top to Caduce. Um, if you remember, he sort of took it on his chest. And I mean, Pickford did very well. I thought he did the tackle of the match very, very early in the first half. I thought 
either him or Jared Bowen did the best dribble of the match. If, if, and, and he was unlucky. We should have got a free kick. When Edson Alvarez started dribbling it down the pitch, a Alvarez did what Declan Rice did last season, carried it down the pitch. And I feel we should have got a free kick there because he was fouled. And I thought the referee was awful, by the way. Let me just say that. I, I don't. And hopefully, you know, if you're a regular watcher of the channel, I don't come in here and whinge about referees frequently. I, I just don't. So I think when I notice someone's bad, then, then then they probably are bad. If I don't speak about them at all, then I haven't noticed them. It means they probably had quite a good game, doesn't it? You don't want to notice a referee. So I thought he did this magnificent dribble. He scored a goal and he took his goal so well. His goal will always be overshadowed by Thomas Suchek. And rightly so. Thomas Suchek's was the game-winning goal. And, and it was a, a magnificent strike. And it wasn't as good. It wasn't as good or as important as Suchek's goal. So it's going to get, that one's going to get the, the headlines and get the press. But Alvarez is way dispatched his goal. He did not look like a defensive midfielder who used to play as a centre-back. He really didn't. I, I thought he I thought he was very good. I'm really pleased that we've signed him. Um, I, I listened to his interview afterwards. His English is better than I thought. I've spoken about him being captain before. I'm not sure if it's good enough for him to be captain, but I think it will be soon. Um, he's been over here, what? probably for six months now. I'll give him another six months. Um, his English will improve a lot more. I, I would be inclined to make him captain. I really would. I think he's as vital as anyone else in the team. And as I say, every facet. He scored a goal. Um, he's tackling. He's heading. His covering was brilliant. Uh, he's, he's, he's dribbling, passing. It, it was an all-round performance for him. And that's one thing I've noticed from... Alvarez is when, when either Pacatar's not there or he's not firing on all cylinders, Alvarez steps up, he puffs his chest out and he says, OK, it might not be my job, but I'm going to try and do some of that stuff that Lucas would normally do. Now, clearly he can't do it as well, but he, it, it, what it shows, it shows leadership and that what we said the other day when I did the video with Michael about Bowen is responsibility. I'm going to take on the responsibility. Now, I, while Suchek, they, so Suchek comes out of the game with, with credit, absolutely. He cleared the ball off the line. Um, in the second half, I thought he was at a really good performance and he scored a wonderful goal. He was as pivotal, you could argue he was as pivotal to that game as Ariola was. However, um, first half, he was awful. It, it was as bad as it gets from Suchek. It was awful. You know, misplaced passes. Just, just terrible. So all over the shop. It just looked like there was there was a point where I looked at him and there was a sort of exchange between him and Anana, who's very comfortable with a ball. Anana won the ball and Suchek had just given it away just before, and then Anana won the ball and then Anana sort of chipped the ball over to the uh, to, to their left wing, uh, over to O'Neill, and you just knew it wasn't a skill set that was in Suchek's locker. So. Uh, my point being, as, as well as Suchek finished the game, and, I, and, and well done, Suchek, and obviously Ward-Prowse got the assist, I thought the midfield was awful. Awful. Well, I thought Suchek and, <clears throat> excuse me, and Ward-Prowse were awful. Excuse me, let me just have a little drink there, big one. <clears throat> Thank you very much. As bad as they were, I, I, I thought absolutely Alvarez was holding that midfield together. And, and I just think he's a remarkable player. He really is. And he will be overshadowed by Suchek because of that ridiculously good goal. And he will be overshadowed by Ariola, who was my man of the match. But he was magnificent. And I've read a lot of the comments in, in the videos uh, from yesterday's video. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm loving the swimming comments, by the way. Don't you worry. I'm booked in for Thursday. I'm absolutely booked in for Thursday. I'm booked in for Monday as well, actually. I'm trying to go... Uh, three days a week at the moment, so I'm um, just trying to get a little bit fixed. I need to work off those creme brulees, really, don't I? Um, but, uh, what am I, what am I bloody talking about? I lost my train of thought there. Oh, yeah, Ariola. Um, you know, look, Ariola, in the comments, people were saying that he was, you know, maybe he's the best, one of the best goalkeepers in the league, and, and I think he probably is one of the best. Is he the best? No, probably not. But we've got a hell of a goalkeeper on our hands. And, I think his distribution is excellent as well. Is he perfect? No, but I don't think any goalkeeper is perfect. And he's just absolutely brilliant. And I'm delighted for him. And you know what? Maybe he goes on to win Hammer of the Year. If he does, he will deserve it. He absolutely will. Um, what does this mean for West Ham now? Um, for now and for the remainder of the season? I don't know. I mean, clearly the squad is buoyant now. Clearly they're spirited. 
And, and this is why I don't know. And, and it's not me. I, I change my mind on these things because of what I see before me. I, I have to say, this is why I said it, after Nottingham Forest game, it looked like the team had no spirit. It didn't look like they were playing for David Moyes. Um, and, and now I'm sort of maybe I'm changing my opinion on that again because, well, I just think we'd looked... Well, I think there is a difference between the Brentford game. Well, obviously, not in the Forest, we were awful. Brentford game, I thought we were good. And then I think there's a difference between the Brentford game and the Everton game because I don't think we were good. I really don't. Um... But we did have spirit and we did have a will to win and we were fighting until the end. Now, maybe they, maybe that's them playing for Moyes. Maybe it's not playing for Moyes. Maybe they're playing for themselves. Maybe it's professional pride. I don't know. And look, as, as I mentioned before, I think there is a tendency with, with David Moyes. When we lose, it's Moyes' fault and Moyes has done the tactics. And when we win, somebody else hiding has done the tactics or Nolan's done the tactics or that sort of thing. And, and I think it, it's, it's such a shame um, with that because I just think David Moyes is flawed and sometimes... What he does works, and sometimes what he does doesn't work, and and I think that's it. I, I think, I think that's where we are. I don't think there's a big conspiracy theory with it. I I, I really don't. Um, and I think if you listen to Moise's comments after that game, what did he say? He said, "It's as it." I said, "I felt that was a little bit harsh on Everton," uh, and and it, it yes, it was. Everton consider, can can consider themselves unlucky, but as I mentioned in yesterday's video, I, I do think they're bang in trouble now. Uh, I thought that was. There's no doubt about it. And this is, this is why I'm, I'm unsure what I saw yesterday. There's no doubt about it. There were points during that game where I thought we were looking at two of the worst teams in the Premier League. Yet there we are up in seventh. And, and then, but I don't, also don't think you, we can rely <laughs> on a goal like that from Thomas Suchek uh, to get us out of it. Or one like uh, Emerson did the other day. Oh, to be fair, Emerson was, was, the fourth, was the fourth goal and the game was safe, um, I would imagine, by then anyway. But um, but we definitely do have something about us. I mean, it will look. We'll discuss it another time. I think I need to see a little bit more. If, if we can, you know, if we can get a draw against Freiburg and we go and beat Burnley, then then I think we can start again. We've got a really tough run coming after that. We can start then thinking about possibly qualifying for European football again. And that, you know, what conversation that brings on. But we'll deal with that uh, close to the time. Uh, for the time being, I, I was I was absolutely delighted. I, I think if there's one thing that disappointed me yesterday. And it does. And I must just be honest uh, here. I, I do feel we're a very fragmented fan base at the moment. And I do feel that the David Moyes issue is the cause of that fragmentation. And, 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 and I, I, I did not enjoy the spectacle yesterday. But when West Ham won, I was jumping around the room. I, I thought it was brilliant. But Suchek scored a goal, honestly. The, the pen and, and the, well, it's not a pen, I've got a whiteboard and a, you know, a sort of dry marker pen. They went up in the air. I'm running around the room. It was brilliant. Dogs barking, you know, wondering what the hell's going on. And, and I enjoyed it. It was good. I felt good. And I don't really know how to phrase this because I don't particularly want to offend anyone here. But I think there are people... Look, I want Moyes to leave at the end of the season. I, I, I think it's just time for a fresh start. I really do. Um, will I change my mind on that between now and the end of the season? I, I don't know. But I don't feel that I'm massively entrenched in either camp. I, I, I sort of don't know which way to go. I, you know, I'm a little bit indecisive on it. Um, you know, certainly. I, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm just not sure what's happening. But people that are vehemently Moyes out, there were... I'm not going to say one or two. There were a number of people in the comments yesterday who I felt could not enjoy the win because they saw it as more validation that Moyes might stay. Um, and, and, and I think that's a shame when you can't enjoy a win. I sort of get it when it's the other way around and we lose. Um, but as there's certainly... So I, what I often find is when we win, when we win, the people that want Moyes to stay are there saying, where are the Moyes out people now? And obviously, you know, when we lose, the people that are always out with, are in the comments to other West Ham fans. These West Ham fans talking with each other here. You know, basically saying, oh, yeah, yeah, come on in. Where, where are all the you lot that want David Moyes to stay? Gone all quiet now. And, and, and it sort of taunt each other. And I, I don't think it's a shame. I hate it, actually. Never mind, I think it's a shame. I absolutely hate it. I hate it, you know, West Ham fans sort of turn on one another in, in that sense. And I wish it wasn't the case. I really do. Um, but I don't think the media... Um, helps. Hey, maybe, maybe I don't help, but I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to set West Ham fan against West Ham fan. I, I certainly do feel that 
yeah, there, there was certainly a lot of goading from the mainstream media on that. But it was enjoyable. I, I didn't enjoy the game, but I enjoyed the result and I enjoyed the end of it. And I get games like that. And I've, I've been on YouTube and, and watched the highlights of the goals. I've watched the interviews. And that's the difference, isn't it? That That is the difference when West Ham win like that. Um, anyway, and, and I just, it's, it's interesting. I always like to do a video like the day after. And I don't feel, it, when you get a win like that, I don't feel any difference a day than I did yesterday. So, which is different, you know, when you lose, you do a, have to do a calm down video, don't you? Uh, anyway, there you go. Right, I am, I am off, I am off ski. And I'll tell you where I'm going now. I'm going uh, to the toy shop because yesterday, uh, for my daughter's birthday, I'd actually bought her something that someone else had bought her. That's what happens when you don't check up. So, and she actually, bless her, for the first, sorry, that's my stomach, by the way, I'm starving. Uh, I shouldn't be starving. Honestly, I ate a mountain of food yesterday. Um, she was so polite, my daughter, for the first 10 minutes, she didn't admit that she'd already got that present earlier on when she'd been at her mum's. And then later on, she said, oh, I feel really bad to tell you this. Said, what, what are you, what? She said, I've got that one. So it's all right, I've got the receipt. So we're going back there now. We're going back. We might go for an all-you-can-eat buffet. I'm joking. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Even if I did, I'll swim it off. 